David Cameron ordered Britain's most senior civil servant to contact The Guardian over classified information leaked by the whistleblower Edward Snowden. It has emerged. Whitehall sources confirm Sir Jeremy Haywood approached the newspaper. It came after The Guardian published details about secret U.S. and British surveillance programs. Editor Alan Russ Bridger said it was later forced to destroy the computer hard drives storing the information. Mr. Russ Bridger said his conversations with the government were with a very senior official claiming to represent the views of the Prime Minister. But he did not say exactly who he had spoken to. Meanwhile, the partner of a Guardian journalist held for nine hours at Heathrow Airport under anti-terror laws on Sunday told the BBC he was forced to divulge email and social media account passwords. David Miranda said his interrogators threatened that he could go to prison if he did not do so, threat to UK. On Tuesday, The Independent and The Daily Mail reported that Cabinet Secretary Sir Jeremy had made contact with The Guardian. BBC political correspondent Chris Mason said these reports were accurate. Whitehall sources emphasized it would have been a total abdication of their responsibilities not to talk to The Guardian. The government feared that if secret data held by the newspaper fell into what it called the wrong hands it could have been a threat to the UK. The sources added, the conversations between Whitehall and The Guardian took place with the explicit approval of Mr. Cameron, Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg and Foreign Secretary William Hague. Following the conversations, Mr. Russ Bridger agreed to what he has called one of the most bizarre incidents in the newspaper's history. Two GCHQ security experts oversaw the destruction in a basement of computer files containing information from America's National Security Agency leaked by Mr. Snowden, files copied. Mr. Russ Bridger said, We were quite clear we were not going to hand this material back to the British government so we destroyed it ourselves under advice from a couple of GCHQ intelligence experts, who told us which bits of the hard drive to smash up. In what way? The editor said he believed handing the hard drives to the government would have been a betrayal of the newspaper's source. It is understood the files had already been copied and The Guardian is expected to continue pursuing the Snowden story, but from the U.S. Sir Malcolm Rifkind, who is the chairman of the Intelligence and Security Committee, told Radio 4's Today program, neither Mr. Snowden nor the editor of The Guardian, or the editor of any other newspaper is in a position to necessarily judge whether the release of top-secret information may have a significant relevance in the battle against terrorism. He went on, sometimes you might genuinely think you can release a document and it's not going to be of any assistance to a terrorist when in fact you might be wrong, and that's simply a question of your inability to judge if you are a newspaper editor or a journalist as opposed to somebody involved in the intelligence work that has to be done. Former National Security Agency contractor Mr. Snowden is now based in Russia. Asked about the independent story, a spokeswoman for The Guardian told the BBC, We're not going to comment on this. Elsewhere, it has emerged that Mr. Miranda, the partner of Guardian journalist Glenn Greenwald who has covered stories based on leaks by Mr. Snowden is launching legal action over his detainment at Heathrow Airport. He wants his confiscated electronic equipment returned and assurances that his private data will not be distributed onto other parties.